So what we need to focus on now is we have a couple of VMs that don't have any IP addresses. So we're actually going to go ahead and configure our VMs with an IP address and get that squared away. I'm going to go ahead and launch Web Console for LVM1 and for LVM2 because why not, right? Launch Web Console. Go ahead and move this guy over a little bit. Perfect. Go ahead and log into him. And then log into him. All right, so he's squared away. I'm going to click up here. I'm going to go down to Edit Connections. I don't have DHCP currently deployed in the environment. I will be taking a look at DHCP as a service down the road, but we need a couple of things in place before we do that. Click on Edit. And then I'm going to take a look at IPv4 settings. I'm going to switch this down to manual. And then add. And this guy here will be a 172.29.1.11. I'm sorry. Let's do a 12. Because we're on VM2. 24 bit mask and then 172.29.1.1. And then I'm going to go ahead and say Google will be our DNS server. Because at some point in time in the future, we will get DNS operational. And once we have that in play, this guy should go to connection established, even though we don't really have anything to connect to. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing here. I'm going to click up here, edit connections. And then we're going to go through and configure him. It'll be 172.29.1.11. Edit. Get him squared away. Give that a couple seconds to do its thing. All right. Sometimes it gets hung up because it's it is a virtual machine. I'm going to go ahead and change this to be manual, and then add. This guy here will be, this will be 172.29.1.11, 24-bit mask, and then 172.29.1.1. And then we're going to put in here quad 8 as our DNS server. Click on Save. And click on Close. And this should go to a connection established here momentarily. Now here's what we have to go do. The next thing what we're going to have to go do is come back over here to this guy and we're going to deploy a logical switch. Now a logical switch is going to be nothing more than a connection that we're going to push from NSX Manager down to our ESXi hosts that are added to vCenter and we're going to interconnect a couple of VMs that are on a couple different ESXi hosts. I'm going to go ahead and add this guy in here. I'm going to call this ls1 and I'm going to go and give it 172.29.1.0 dash and then I can give it a other piece of information if I want to um, whatever that might be I'm going to call this ls1 I'm going to capitalize ls to be ls just like that and I'm going to go ahead and click on the transport zone and I'm going to make this specific to the compute transport zone Okay, compute transport zone only. I'm not looking to connect from my compute to my edge or my compute to my management at the moment. And I'm going to click on add. So that's going to allow communication just within my compute nodes. Okay. So now I'm going to go back over here to this guy. And I'm going to click on, I could, um, there's a couple of different things that I can do. I can go to my logical switches. I can click on the logical switches, click on this guy, and I can click on add VM. And if I do that, it's going to go out and say, okay, what VMs do you want to add? I'm going to add LVM1 and LVM2, bump them over, click on Next, and then I'm going to choose both NICs and then Finish. So they're both going to get added. And I'm going to go back over here to my host. I am a host 2 right here. So we're reconfiguring the VM, and what you're going to see is this will change to... If we go ahead and refresh this, the VM network now changes over to VXLAN wired, distributed VS, and virtual wire LS1 172.29.1.0. And the same thing with this guy. He should be the same, but he's going to be in host 3. Now what's cool about this is, 
If I come over here to LVM1, I right click here and go open terminal. Give that a couple of moments. He will pop open. I'll do an IIF config. And I am 172.29.1.11. I should be able to ping 172.29.1.12. And I should get a response. Now this traffic right here that you see going back and forth, whoops, is being encapsulated inside of VXLAN. All this traffic right here is VXLAN encapsulated between the two hosts. Because if you look back here, I've got one host is host three, and this host is on host two. So they are not attached to the same host, but they are attached to the same V wire or logical switch, logical segment. And what's happening is if I was to draw this out real quick, essentially what's happening between the two, if I was to come over here to the compute cluster, uh, let's see if I can't find, let's go back over here where I have a little more room to work with. Let me change this to be a little bit thicker so it's easier for you guys to see. So I have my compute cluster, right? Compute cluster. Then I've got host one, I've got host two, and I've got host three. And on these hosts I have uh, VM1 and I have VM2, right? Well, what's happening is they're not attached to the same host, or I'm sorry, they are not attached to this, they're, they're in two different hosts, but they are attached to the same logical switch. This guy right here. This logical switch is v, VLAN segment 5000, or VXLAN segment 5000. The name of it is LS117299.1.0 and attached to the compute transport zone. Now, what's actually happening, if we were to look at host one, host two, and host three, respectively, from the backbone, if we were to look at it from our connectivity perspective, we have these connections going up here to the switch, and this guy right here, this guy right here, and this guy right here are in the same subnet. We have 10.0.5.11.12 and dot 13. So if I was to do a verification command and do a look up and see this, you would see that this guy has MAC address A, this is MAC address B, and this is MAC address C, for example. That's just for to help everybody understand everything. From an underlay perspective, any communication that's coming from this guy right here of 172.29.1.12 11 and then dot 12. Any communication that's going back and forth between these two is VXLAN encapsulated. Because it's VXLAN encapsulated, this is going to be the outer header, and I need to know where I'm pointing to. Pointing to. So I'm sorry. This stuff right here will be the inner header because this is the original packet. It's going to be placed inside of a VXLAN header. So the inner header is going to be right here. Then it's VXLAN. Then you actually have UDP here. And then you're going to have the outer IP header. The outer IP header from a source from host one is going to be 10.0.5.11. And the destination will be 10.0.5.12. We're going to put the MAC address of A and the MAC address of B here. And what this is where this right here is underlay. This over here is all overlay. So the overlay is encapsulated inside of the underlay via UVXLAN UDP encapsulation back and forth. So all the underlay has to know is if I'm coming from this IP address and I want to get to this IP address, what is my destination MAC address going to be? So I'm going to put my source as A, my destination is C, and that gets me from host 1 to host 3, so on and so forth. Now the cool thing about this is I don't really need to worry about anything in the underlay because as long as I have communication from one host to another, I'm a happy camper. However, if I don't have communication from one host to another, that could be a problem. So you gotta make sure your underlay is squared away and good to go first before your overlay can work effectively. Now, what I'm gonna go ahead and do in the next video, because this video is pretty much done, we've gone through and broken this down at this point. Once we cover this, I'm gonna go ahead and jump in and we're gonna deploy, I'm in between videos, I'm gonna go ahead and deploy some more VMs 
And what I'm going to go do is, uh, it'll be two more VMs specifically. One, and I'm going to create another logical switch, and we'll go through those steps. We'll create the new logical switch. We'll associate VMs to the logical switch. And then I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to deploy a distributed logical router and how that comes into play. And we'll see exactly how all this stuff ties in as we're moving forward. The beginning pieces of this is, are actually very, very simple. It's just a handful of clicks in order to make things communicate with each other back and forth. When you get further along, and you start adding in services and so on and so forth, that's when this gets a little bit more intimidating and you really need to understand all the components. So I'm going to walk you through those details as we get there. So just be aware of what's happening when we get there. I'm going to go ahead and clear the screen off. Thanks so much for stopping by, and I'll catch all of you guys in the next video.